Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting a short training course on unsteady heat conduction equation. In the last video, we have introduced the concept of paradox of instantaneous heat propagation and we have briefly explained about it. In this particular video, we will talk more about this paradox and this is going to be a kind of storytelling session where we will be introducing you with a few materials where this particular fact is explained in detail. A part of the things we will be discussing here and the rest of the part I will be sharing as a material so that you can do further study. So without delay, let us proceed with an article which is on this particular fact that is on the, the name of the article is on the instantaneous propagation paradox of heat conduction so so far we already know yeah there is a paradox and the paradox is about instantaneous heat propagation that means infinite speed at which heat is propagating if we consider the equation which we have shown so that was the equation if this is the equation then heat ha has to travel at an infinite speed and which is unphysical and that is what the paradox is. Now, if we read a few lines in the abstract that will talk about this particular work and also the paradox. So it talks, the paradoxical consequence of heat propagation at an infinite speed. So initial line is talking about the paradox which is propagation at an infinite speed which I have already mentioned. From the heat equation of Fourier is explained from the kinetic viewpoint of Boltzmann. That means in this particular article, they, they are telling there is a paradox and that is about infinite speed of heat which is there in Fourier's heat equation and they have taken care of it by kinetic view, viewpoint which is given by Boltzmann. So I will talk a little bit about this particular thing here and I will talk more about the paradox. So then it is telling the kinetic heat transport process can be conveniently divided into two stages, the small and the large time behavior. So it is talking about the time scales. I mean, at which time scale we are operating. So they are telling this particular heat propagation should be, should be, should be looked at two different time scales and those are small and large and what is the small time scale that is the first has a time constant of order of a mean free path so what is a mean mean free collision time basically so what is a mean free collision so if we remember we have gas i mean it is applicable for all gas liquid and solids but if we just remember about gas or liquid molecules so what we know is those molecules are ceaselessly moving here and there in a medium. Now, when they are moving here and there, the molecules are colliding with each other. Now, the distance traveled by a molecule between two successive collisions is the mean free path and the time that is required for this particular phenomenon to happen, that is the collision time scale. And if we are operating in this time scale, which is very less, you can imagine this will be very less time scale. And if you are operating in this time scale, that is called small time scale. And if you are operating at a time which is multiple times higher than this collision time, that is large time scale. So Fourier heat equation can be can be seen from the point of view of these time scales and which is important. Then it is telling, yeah, the Fourier law of heat conduction is valid to depict large time behavior only. So whatever we are, we are actually solving by this particular equation, which I am showing you multiple times, there is a unsteady heat conduction equation that should be only seen at a larger time scale and that then only it is valid. 
so this is the thing it is mentioning and at lower time scale what should be the modification of the equation that also is given in this particular article and we will be coming to that that is called telegraph heat equation but before that let us read a few lines of the introduction because it talks a um, lot of things so it is talking about according to the classical equation of heat conduction which we are showing you again and again which is derived from the use of Fourier's law of heat conduction the effect of a heat pulse is felt in instantaneously throughout its surrounding media so that day I have talked about this particular fact I will repeat once again suppose you have a rectangular block like this now initially consider all the block everywhere in the block we had same temperature say ambient temperature now suddenly what we did we have made this particular wall at higher temperature suppose look at this particular picture we have made this at a higher temperature so what will happen this effect will immediately go I mean spread everywhere in the block it will take no time and this is what is your instantaneous heat propagation and which is mentioned here in other words the heat flux sets in with an infinite speed of propagation so I mean signal is moving with an infinite speed means the heat flux is also moving in infinite speed that is what it is mentioning this is non-physical this non-physical consequence of heat equation is caused by the oversimplification in Fourier's assumption that heat flux is linearly proportional to the local temperature gradient so this is very important this line just look at let us read it once again this non-physical consequence of heat equation is caused by oversimplification in Fourier's assumption that heat flux is linearly proportional to the local concentration gradient so that is the wrong assumption we should not tell it as a wrong assumption that is an approximated assumption and that is why it is leading to the paradox so what we need to do is we need to modify the fundamental Fourier's law that is Fourier's law should not be linearly proportional to the heat or temperature gradient there should be some time dependent term I will show you uh, this particular thing uh, from Wikipedia because in Wikipedia it is nicely written now let us uh, read few more lines a similar situation prevails with respect to the diffusion equation so you know the conduction equation and the fixed law diffusion equations are equivalent so it is telling the same I mean the paradox which is existing for the heat equation it is also there for the diffusion equation because in diffusion equation also the signal travels at an infinite speed which is, should not be the physical condition so that is what it is talking about this problem indeed dated back to the time of Maxwell suggestions were advanced in some recent works to make Fourier's constitutive relation non-local in time so what is that one let us proceed with uh, Wikipedia article so here they have mentioned so if you see they have modified the Fourier's law in general in Fourier's law we don't have this particular term Fourier's law is this Q is equal to minus K gradient of theta where theta is the temperature so we know about I mean this particular equation but this particular equation is leading to the paradox and that is why there should be some modification there should be some time dependent term and that is tau 0 into del Q del T so what is tau 0 this is called relaxation time how it is defined so here they have mentioned so C square is equal to alpha by tau 0 where alpha is the thermal diffusivity so if you just imagine thermal diffusivity is a property of the material 
by tau 0 that is giving you the propagation speed so this c square will be the actual propagation speed of heat so the paradox was saying that heat is traveling or the signal is moving with an infinite speed but if you put this particular term then it will not propagate with an infinite speed it will propagate with a finite speed and the finite speed is c, c where c square is equal to this so if if we if we if we if we know about c if we know about alpha then we can have an estimation of this relaxation time so this is how the equation fourier's equation is modified and this is called your hyperbolic heat equation because this will lead to this particular equation where you have a second order time derivative term and then it will no longer be a parabolic equation this is an this is a hyperbolic equation and that is why this is called hyperbolic heat equation hcc Math mathematically it is the same as the telegraph equation yeah the telegraph equation is given here which is derived from the maxwell's kinetic theory so this is the maxwell kinetic model so if you are interested you can read the entire article i will be putting the article in the description box however i will be not explaining everything here i will just show you the telegraph heat equation so if you see in telegraph heat equation is also similar you have a second order time derivative term you have a first order time derivative and you have a second order space derivative if you see dou rho x again dou rho x of t so this is similar to this particular equation and that is what they are mentioning that this equation is equivalent to telegraph heat equation so i guess this much of information should be necessary to understand the equation in an appropriate way to understand the physical facts because ultimately if we solve this particular equation we will be solving a physical problem where we will be achieving temperature distribution for a particular scenario so before we do that i thought that understanding the entire equation in a complete manner should be necessary and that's why i spent a lot of time to explain this paradox and yeah uh, in the from the next video we will not talking we will not be talking about this paradox we will be going to the analytical solutions we will understand how exactly analytical solution is to be done then we will talk about what are the limitations of the analytical solution and what are the advantages of numerical solution and then we will be going to the numerical methodologies and we'll be solving all with all the schemes and we'll also do hands-on session on coding so this is going to be interesting i guess if you feel the same then uh, kindly follow our channel and do subscribe to it it will motivate us thank you